We've been in the series Evergreen uh, and talking about what those trees and the definition of evergreen can mean to us spiritually and who we are in Christ. And, and so we've talked about how they're strong, they're fresh, they uh, are attractive in any season. No, you know, no matter if it's spring, summer, fall, or even winter, that, that whatever happens, those trees, they, they hold on to their leaves or, or to those needles or whatever it is that shows that there's life in it. And, and we as Christians are supposed to be the same. No matter what happens in our life, no matter what season we're in, what's going on around us, that we, because of Christ, because of who he is, can be evergreen. We can be ever showing the life of God and not looking dead, you know, and not be, you know, doing good in, at one time and then in another season things are going bad and we look just like a, just a mess, you know. God didn't make us to look like a mess. He made us in his image to look like him and to show his life to everybody around us all the time. And so I want to talk this week, I'm going to end this series, and, and what I want to talk about today is being planted, because whatever kind of tree you are, but we're talking about evergreen trees, that if you're not planted, if you're not rooted, if the roots of your life aren't going and your spirit aren't going down deep, if you're being moved around, you're moving yourself around, or what have you, then, then you, you could be a little tree. You can be a little, you know, okay, but what brings life, what brings strength in that attractiveness that attracts people to who God is, is being planted in Him, is being planted in the Word, being rooted in the Word of God and, and in a community of believers with people that you're growing with, that your roots are going down deep with, allowing those roots to, to even touch so that you can, you know, hold each other up. That's what God has called us to be. That's how God created us. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. In Psalm 92, it says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar of Lebanon. I read this scripture a couple of weeks ago. But I want to focus on this part here. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. God's clearly stated here that there's a prerequisite to us flourishing, to us having the life of God flowing through us so much that people are attracted to who he is, that people see that no matter what happens to us, that we are good because God is good and he's with us. There is something about that. You've got to be planted. You've got to be rooted in the soil of God and rooted into a body of believers that he has planted you with. Now, it's not just about this church. It's just about a church that you are supposed to be at, that God has placed you in, because he does place us in places. And he said, you need to grow. You need to suck up all the nutrients and all the life and the things that I can give you and also be there with a people that can stand with you, that can hold your hand, that can encourage you, that can just... Be there in the tough times, and that's the way that the life of God will show no matter what happens. He says, be planted, be rooted, let your roots grow down deep. Don't stay in a little pot, you know, so you can be moved around. Like, I don't, you know, maybe I'll try some other place. And I'm, I'm, I told myself I wasn't going to be mean this service. I started to get a little mean last service, you know, but... Don't be like a tumbleweed rolling around wherever the wind blows. Anything comes along, a gust of wind. Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to go somewhere else. The problem with tumbleweed is, is it's dead. It's dead. There's no life in it because there's no roots to, to grow down into the ground and suck up the life, the water, 
the vitamins, the food. They can't do it. It's got no roots. God says, be planted, be rooted in me and with people. John 15, verse 4, it says, now this is Jesus, and he's kind of telling us, like, hey, you want life, you want health, you want, you want strength, you want these things, this is what I'm going to tell you. He says, remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is ser severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. But I love this scripture, this verse, it starts out, it says, remain in me and I will remain in you. He didn't say, I will remain in you wherever your little tumbleweed blows. He doesn't say, do whatever you want. And I'll remain there with you. He says, remain in me. And I will remain in you. He says, take those roots of your life and just wrap them around me as tight as you can. Just hold on tight and you know that I will remain in you. Re remain. Hold on to me with all your might. Whenever something's going on in your life that you know that you've got those roots wrapped around me and nothing, you will produce fruit. You will grow. You'll be strong. But remain in me and I will remain in you. I am the vine. You're the branches. You can't take a branch off and just be like, here, just see what happens. It needs the vine to get the nutrients, to get the water, to get everything that it needs to grow and to produce fruit. And he says, remain, stay, hold on tight to who I am. And you'll produce fruit. You'll be strong. You'll have everything that you need. Because I have everything that you need. And when you're holding on tight to me, you've got it. You've got what I have. In Genesis, see, this is so much now, it seems that, that we think like, you know, I'm, I'm good to be alone. I don't need anybody. I can take care of myself. I've got a relationship with God. Why do I need anybody else? But the thing is, is that God created us to be with people. The first people that he created, he created Adam. And he said, you know, not quite good enough yet. There's something missing. This person is alone. This guy that I just breathed life into, he's awesome because I created him. But there's still something missing. He needs somebody to hold him up. He needs somebody to encourage him and to be there with him when he's making decisions. He needs people. And he shouldn't be alone. But I love that, that whenever he talks about Adam and Eve in Genesis, that he created the garden, is the, the, the great gardener, the garden of Eden, the most perfect place. And he didn't say to Adam and Eve, he, he didn't say, hey, go in here, you can leave, just go wherever you want, just wander around, be a nomad, just do whatever you want. No, he says, I'm placing you here. And when we read that, it's uh, Genesis 2, 8. It says, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. The word put is yanach. You like that, don't you? It's a good pronunciation. Yanach. It means to rest, settle down, and remain. To have rest, to be quiet. He said, Adam and Eve. I am planting you here in this garden that I've made for you. I want you to stay here because this is where you're supposed to be. This is where I am. This is where we can walk together, be together, walk in the cool of the day. This is where you will get everything that you need. I've 
put you here. I have planted you here. I want your roots to go down here. And in verse 15, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden again to remain, to stay, to be there. Stay put. He put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. He not only put Adam and Eve there just to walk around and be like, I wonder what God's going to do next. Maybe he'll take care of the trees. Maybe he'll take care of the animals. But he said, I want you to tend and to keep this garden that I've created. I don't want you just to sit around and receive. I don't want you just to just be your lone little people and not do anything. I've created you to tend and to keep this garden. It's the same with us. He's created us to do things, to be with people and to tend his garden to tend to his people. But how can we do that if we're not planted and rooted in him and his word and also in a body of believers, in a group of, or a family of God that we stay with, that we hang with, that we talk with and share with, that, that we open up to. He says, I will plant you. And he does plant us. We don't plant ourselves. Plants don't plant themselves. I don't know if you knew that or not. But they have to be placed in the garden, and that's what God does. He says, I will place you where you need to be. This church is amazing. I love it. It's great. God is good, and he's here. It may not be for everybody, and it isn't. I know it isn't because we can't take care of the whole world. But I know that there's people that are called to be planted here, that are called to be rooted in, and be a part of this family. And I know there's people that are called to be rooted and planted in another church. But the deal is you gotta be planted. You gotta be a part of something. Can't be a tumbleweed or a nomad or just plant it in a pot and be like, well, I'll stay here a while. My pot's heavy enough to keep me here when the wind blows, but if it blows real hard, I'll move. That's not how God created us. He said, get in there and hold on to me and hold on to the people around you and don't blow away. Don't let things take you away from the place that I've called you to be. Hold on tight. Remain in me. Remain in the place that I've put you. That I've planted you. And you'll be okay. We have to be rooted in the word. Psalm 1, 1 through 3, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We've read this one a couple weeks ago. Nor stands in the path of sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law, and in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. What's the prerequisite here? The one who meditates on the word day and night. You know, I, I think of, you guys like to plant flowers and trees and stuff? I do. Yes, sir. All right, Pastor Ryan does too. We'll hang out sometime, maybe plant some bushes or something. But, you know, you read the little instructions on the thing, the little tag there that comes with it and shows how tall, how much sun, all this stuff. And it says, it says you know, once it's established, you can fertilize and, and water it or whatever, every, three to six months, or it's just fertilized. Every three to six months. Because that's all it's going to need. But this is the big difference between those plants and us. We don't need our fertilizer every three to six months. We need our fertilizer, our nutrients, the things that we get from God and meditating, not every three, three to six months. Hey, why don't you read the Bible every three to six months? You'll be good. No. It says meditate day and night in the law of the Lord. Meditate on, just whenever you can, whenever possible, you spend your time digging your roots down into this soil right here and you will have everything you need. 
You will have what God has. You hold on to him. You hold on to his word. Not every three to six months. Daily. Whenever you can. Communicate with God. Pray. Read the Bible. Get, I mean, this is, this is basically like the miracle grow of the Spirit. I'm having trouble. I'm not growing. I'm not getting what I need. Get the miracle grow. Get in the Bible. Read it whenever you can. Get fertilized. It's right there. It's everything that you need. And we got to be planted in the Word. It says, it would be like being planted by the rivers of living water. I love Rivers. It's not like somebody's going to come out with a garden hose and, and water you every once in a while. No, if you meditate on the in the word, day and night, it'll be like plant, be, planting yourself by rivers of living. Rivers don't run out. Rivers continually have fresh water, fresh nutrients that flow through the banks, that flow past the roots of the trees that are planted next to them. And this is living water. It's the water of God. The water to water our spirit that keeps us hydrated, that keeps us healthy, that keeps us going. And it's by planting ourselves, by letting our roots go down deep into the word of God, spending time with him whenever we can. You know, 2 Timothy, it says, all scripture is God-breathed and is good for correction. It's good for rebuking. It's good for building people up. It's good for every good work. I know it's hard to say, you know, like, well, I mean, I know it's good to encourage me and to give me the things that I need to get through the day. Sometimes God has to prune us. Sometimes God has to come with those clippers. He says, hey, I see a dead branch there. I see something in your life that's, that's causing your branches to die off. I'm going to have to come in there and prune it out. This is what the word's for. It helps us to to know the things that are supposed to be pruned, that we can allow God to prune it. Has anybody ever seen those sack worms that get on trees? Whew, man. They just take over a tree. Take over it so fast, and that's what happens in our life if, if we are not allowing God to be our gardener. We're not allowing God to be the one to come in. Hey, God, every three to six months, you know, you could be dead in two. No, spending time with him. Spending time with him. Reading, meditating on the word. Allowing, like we said, those roots to grab hold of Jesus. He says, I will remain in you, but you have to remain in me. You have to hold tight. Got to be rooted in a community with people. This is not just a suggestion. This is what God has asked us to do. And like I said, to be a part of a church, a, a people, a small group, or even not just a small group or a service, but just doing things with each other, spending time together. Because trees are better together. You know, I read that there's some willow trees that they, you know, maybe other trees too, but I just read about the willow trees, okay? So, that they communicate with each other. I mean, they're not like, hey, over there. They don't yell. But somehow, when their roots are down in the soil and, they, and they're touching each other, that one tree over here gets attacked by a bug or a worm or something, and it's being attacked, and it's able to send 
through its roots, some communication to the other trees around it to say, hey, I'm being attacked. You better be careful. And all of a sudden, all the trees around it produce whatever nutrients or vitamin, this protective chemical that it shoots it up from the roots to their leaves that makes them more strong and less susceptible, susceptible to an attack from those worms, to an attack from those bugs or whatever they are. It's the same with us. If we're out there all alone, it's a lot harder to see what's coming along. It's a lot harder to see before the, the thing hits you what's going to hit your life, what's going to try to knock you down or knock you out. But when you're planted with people, when you spend time with them, you just hang out, you, you know, talking, sharing. I know it's hard. I mean, sharing with people, opening up, it's hard. But so many times when we don't want to share, when we want to be all locked up and be it's just, I'm good by myself, it's because we've got something to hide. And God says, you don't hide anything from me or those around you. He says, you need each other. You don't need to be a lone tree. You need to be planted with those. You need to be planted by people that are there to strengthen you and encourage you and to let you know when there's something that's getting ready to knock you out. There's something that's getting ready to attack you or something does and they're there to hold you tight. Their roots are bound to your roots and you hold each other up. You hold each other together. You know, after first service, Dawn Hewitt, the amazing Dawn Hewitt that helps us to do what we do, she sent me a scripture, and so she doesn't have it, I don't think, unless you put it on already, but in Colossians 2.19, it says, we are joined together by his strong sinews, and we grow only as we get our nourishment and strength from God. Wow. We're joined together by his strong sinews. And we're okay when we're getting our nourishment from God. But how do you do that? How does that happen? It's through the roots. It's through being planted. You guys, you know, when you go buy a plant from the, the plant store, the nursery, the, or Lowe's or what have you, you know, they come in these little pots. And you guys ever taken one of those things out and you pop the, the pot off the bottom of the plant and it's just there, all the dirt and the roots and everything, they're just bound up in this little pot-like shape. Which is cool for a second until you realize that it's been bound up. It's holding itself real tight and it's not really that good for the plant. It can stay alive as long as somebody sits there and waters it day after day after day, and maybe gives it some of that fertilizer to, to help it stay alive. But the problem is it's not going to grow. It'll stay a little plant. It's the same with us. See, we can be there sitting in a pot, sitting there with our roots all bound up. I'm good. I'm okay. I don't need to be planted anywhere. Okay, you can probably stay alive, but you're never going to grow. You're never going to be any more than what you are now. Again, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. It says, be planted, be rooted, allow your roots to grow. You know those plants, you have to, after you take them out of the pot, you, you pull apart the roots at the bottom. You, you, you try to get them from being bound up so that the roots can actually grow down into the ground because sometimes they won't even after you plant them in the ground. Now you can try to, you know, get out of that little, little pot that you've been in and plant yourself somewhere, but, but if you don't allow the roots to get untangled, if you don't allow those roots to spread around and, and to go out and, you know, spend 
time maybe in a community group or with the people that you're that you're you know at church with allowing yourself to to communicate and walk together with those people you you most likely could get root bound you can look like you're okay but you're still still never going to grow we have to allow god to to plant us we have to allow him to to pull on our roots and and, and say hey you stay here you stay where i've planted you allow those roots to 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 go far and wide and deep so that no matter what happens you can't be pulled up you know there's different kinds of roots for trees and weeds and those kind of things and and in the front of my house I was trying to pull these little trees that were growing up out of out of my garden because I didn't want them there they weren't the trees that I wanted and so there's a couple of these little sprouts, these little trees that are, you know, about yay high. And I pulled one and just yanked it right out of the ground. It just had these little, little shoots coming out, little, you know, they didn't go down deep. And I just pulled that thing right out of the ground. And then I go over to the next one and I just, I'm like, this is going to be easy. I'm so strong. I'm just going to rip this thing right out of the ground. And I go down and pull it and I'm like, Whoa. and it's like, ah. Oh! That thing just like burned my hand when I ripped up the stalk of this tree. I was like, this is different. So I dig down with the shovel into this tree and, and realize that this is not like one of those other trees. This tree sent a root straight down into the ground like two feet. And then it's like sending all kinds of little, you know, little shoots off of that. And there's no way that I could have pulled this thing out without digging as hard as I could. And see, it's the same with us. We, see, God has said, no, see, I'm going to send your roots straight down into the ground. I'm going to send them straight down. You send your roots straight down into my spirit and into my word and into the community of believers that you're placed with. When you put down those roots, not just like there's a little bitty ones. I just want to try to get a little bit of nourishment here. Maybe I can get a few little things from this place and maybe talk to one or two people. Yeah, I don't think I want to go to a community group though. You know, I, I may, uh, you know, maybe I'll come to the mess of all, but I don't want to do too much. God says, no, that's not how I've created you. I've created you to send those roots down deep. I've created you to hold tight to who I am and to the people around you so that you can be strong in whatever season I've placed you. You know, as I close, um, you guys like bonsai trees? Yeah, I do too. They're really cool, but they're just these little bitty trees, you know? I'm sure Tori likes them because she loves everything that's small. <laughs> everything. You go in Walmart and there's those little bitty tents for display. She's like, I just want one of those little ones. <laughs> just a little tent. It's like, you can't sleep in there. I know, but it's so cute. Those bonsai trees, you know what happens is, is whenever they grow and just come out of the ground, they take, they take the tree and pull it out of the ground. And that tap root, the one that I said that that really strong tree had that allowed it to stay in the ground whenever I tried to pull it up, they take that tap root and they snip it off. They snip off the root that is the main root that's supposed to go down into the ground so that it can get all the nourishment it needs to grow strong. These trees are not special trees. They've just been cut. They just can't put the roots down. They're not able to get the, the nutrients and, and the water that they need to grow to be a huge tree. But it is a huge tree. It's just been cut. It's not putting its roots down. And I don't know about you. Bonsai trees are cool to look at. 
but it's never going to be anything more than something put on a shelf. It's just a little something good to look at. But it was created to be a huge tree. It was created to produce life, shade, fruit, all these different things, but it never can because it can't throw down roots. God says, I want you not just to be a bonsai tree, not just to be a little picture of who I am that's put up on a shelf and people's like, oh, that's a cute little Christian. But you're created to put those roots down. And when you put those roots down in him, and in your community of believers around you. When you do that, then you can grow strong because what he's created you to do is to grow strong, to provide protection and shade for those around you, to help them, to encourage them. And as a large tree, you can do that. You can produce fruit to help feed people. And your roots can grow down deep to hold on to those around you. So that you're not one of those trees that, you know, you see those lone trees that whenever a storm comes and it blows the, the tree so hard that it just pops the, the little root ball right out, of, right out of the ground. He said, that's not how I've created you. Number one, your roots are going to go way deeper than that. Number two, you're going to be planted with people alongside of you that, that, that even if your roots get a little weak, that those People around you will help hold on to you. They will help you whenever something's coming along. And they can communicate to you. They can encourage you or, or build you up or pray for you so that you are strengthened in, in due season. Because that is how I've created you. Not to be alone. Not to blow wherever the wind goes. But to be planted and grow with strength in who God is in his spirit, with everything that he has. As you remain in him, he will remain in you. Amen? Why don't you stand with me?